Hey buddies, welcome to Mass Games. My name is Simon and today I'm going to talk to you about the game Chizo Rising, which is a collectible tile game. So in this particular game, I'm actually going to give you a run through on how to play it. So this is going to be a how to set up and play video. Uh, you might regard it as an overview as well in this kind of collectible tile laying game. This game is similar to the likes of um, 1565 and games you may be familiar with such as Marvel Champions. And the reason being is you're playing out a certain amount of characters, a certain amount of deck. You're going to make your deck as you wish, 30 to 60, but using tiles. Now, in this particular game, um, you're going to be battling and doing a number of different ways to score points. And it's the first of 12 being something to do with the Zodiac, funny enough, being 12. So in this case, it's basically something for, I think it's uh, China Zodiac, Chinese Zodiac is basically how this works. So this is by Temple Games, an American company, and it's made in Germany. And basically each set contains 21 creature tiles, 11 special effects tiles, two Chizo Rising booster packs containing eight random tiles each. And I've got a spreadsheet for all the things that I've actually got in this set too. And of course, uh, yeah, you also of course get the hamburger goodness as well. So in terms of this game, I'm just gonna take you through basically how it works. And let me talk to you about the theme first and foremost. So the story. In the beginning, the story of Chizo rising, everything unfolds as a dramatic set of events, bringing uncertainty to the realm. Patriarch Pierre's has died. Long revered and respected, his death sets a deadly contest in motion. The numerous keepers of the kingdom begin assaults on one another in an effort to seize powerful control and ultimate power. The keepers summon 12 mighty classes of creature to wage these duels, winged dragons, noble tigers, and defiant rams. But these are just three that are mustered of the field of battle. So, matched in strength, intelligence, and compatibility, they march at the keeper's command. So, this is basically the first of a series of games uh, basically using Adventure the 12 Signs of the Zodiac, as I mentioned. And it's for two to four players, and basically you're representing a keeper of the kingdom. So each player is a keeper of the kingdom, and you command mighty, powerful beasts. And I'll take you through some of these characters in a moment, in a way I quite like showing you this front cover at the moment. As I mentioned, Design of the USA and uh, Ludo are uh, Ludo uh, Fact, the people who actually put this together. So now let me take you through what's inside, etc. So you're using a personal stack of tiles. As I said, uh, what you're going to be doing is you're going to have between 30 and 60 tiles in your stack. And you can only, you're not longer, well, you can't have any more than three of any one tile with the exception of basic uh, creature tiles, which I put onto. And you may have a limited amount of basic ones of them. For example, the ram, monkey, and the dragon. Now, of course, you've got to play on a flat surface for this because I don't know how the tiles work. And let me talk to you about what you can see on these tiles. So let's start with this RAM, for example. You have an element up here. You have the tile name. You have the tile icon. Compatibility, which we'll talk about. Basically, you can only ever have matching ones next to each other. So you can only have a RAM next to a RAM, so to speak. And the way that works is, if you want to do that, you might help yourself score some points. So in this case, a RAM is next to another RAM, which is fine. And you might get some points. There's one way of scoring points. You can choose to play something that's not next to it, so somebody else doesn't score points because there, again, there are two other ways of scoring points. So you also have intelligence value. There's these numbers down here. You have the tile effect, if anything, written on here as well. You have the strength value bottom left. And we've talked about, I think, everything else on there. So these are creature tiles can be identified by their color. For example, the ram, they're all like gray, but you'll find other tiles obviously representing different things as well. Some things of strength as well. So if they have that written, they're going to have strength, STR written on them as well, or intelligence perhaps, um, which would be INT. And they can be played basically in the playing area. And uh, anything else you'll need maybe for the action uh, during the match. So let's talk about everything else that's there. Okay, so if any beige tiles as well, um, and you know the red obstacles, basically they can be used by every creature class and every player. Now I know at the minute I'm going through a fair amount of different things presently. And uh, you'll see why in a moment. Here's that indifferent rat. So let's talk about the preparation. You're going to have a stack, as I mentioned. You're going to have 30 to 60 tiles. And you're going to have a points pile. So you'll see me set up in a moment. Basically, you're going to have a stack of tiles. You're going to have a stack of 15 and 15, something like that. As you get points, you can have a points stack over here on one side and a discard pile over to the other side too. So that's going to be kind of down there, if that makes sense. And let's leave this back in position here. Righty ho. As you can see, all the text is English, but for some reason the box, this bit's in German, uh, Dutch, that bit's in English, and that's in Dutch as well. As you can see, I've also got English rules as well, got PDF. 
So as you can see, I could be starting off down here. You could have someone here and someone there and say a three player game. And uh, yeah, on a player's turn, you basically have two actions and three possibilities to choose from. You can play a creature. So this could obviously be played from a stack and you can play a creature, an item or an obstacle, place it next to any other tiles which are already in that zone in the middle of the board. Let's say there's, you know, let's say there's three tiles here. Again, compatibility wise, there's nothing stopping them from being incompatible. So every action is optional and can be skipped or you can choose to do something twice. And let me just notice at this point, please, that, uh, yeah, by all means, blue, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, check out the comments and also the description for Instagram, Facebook, etc. And let's move on to basically how you can scoring points, etc. So enabling space must be horizontal or vertical or diagonal, so you can't go, obviously, over here if you wish to try and do that. And each tile shows the icons of the creature that is compatible with, as I mentioned here. So, for example, horses, you know, typically get other horses. But as you go through, there are some tiles that do not want to be next to each other. As an example, I think the tiger, you do not want to put a tiger near another tiger. So that is something to be aware of, and I'll see if I can get to that in due course. And, uh, but again, you can place them, it's just you're not going to be scoring points. But you might want to do that to, again, to prevent your opponents. One way of doing it, again, trying to place something and ensuring nobody else stops you from doing it to, again, score points. And I'll get back onto that. You can battle as well. Each creature defended or defeated in battle is also considered to be captured and can be added to the point pile. Let's say it's over here. And again, you're going to get one point for each captured piece. Again, first 12. You also have special effects. They also score points. And if played successfully, they can be added to other points as well, maybe uh, from the discard pile or something like that. And uh, yeah, that's again, working you to towards getting that point score up to 12. Uh, just remember to put all the tiles in that points pile obviously in the correct position to facing its owner. So in this case, it's me. So this is orientated towards me. So let's uh, talk about um, action stacks and the battle action stack. So an action stack is a stack of tiles that's separate from the playing area. It starts with an action tile and reaction tiles can be placed on top of it. So, um, for example, a reacting to an action stack is not an action, but maybe they want to add a tile to the action stack after someone else has added something. So uh, let's say play golden egg. So there might be a tile in here called golden egg. This is, for example, the rotten egg. And what you're going to be doing is you can basically pass that across um, to somebody else. And as you can tell, you actually orientate the tile based on who placed it. So these are facing towards me because I placed them. If you want to place it like this, I know that if I can interact with this tile, I can stop that person trying to score some points. So yeah, battle action stacks as an action. A battle may be announced and you choose the attacker. Uh, by basically, the attacker is going to say, yeah, I, I announce control on a defender. And you're going to be controlling the, yeah, the opponent. And uh, they must be neighbours and the battle a stack begins. So you're going to be basically placing down face down by the attacker one of your tiles. So imagine this is my tile stack here. And uh, then you're going to obviously reveal compared to your opponent. And you're going to see who's the victor. So I'll be placing something like, I don't know, let's say, let's grab some different tiles to take you through some other stuff in here. I'll basically, again, as I mentioned, have it orientated towards me. Then the opponent, the, uh, the defender, will have it orientated towards them. So let's pick, well, there's a, there's a tiger there. Let's just pick and go through these ones as well. Wild strength, rearing up, flight, healing touch. We have the rabbit leap. We've got that crow blast. More rat, more horses. We've got more rabbits, again, more gray tiles. So again, I might choose to have it facing towards me. Let's say at the high valley. And they choose to have a face down one towards them. And again, the result of the battle. So let's talk about how that works. The strength and intelligence of both creatures must be compared. And that is whoever has the highest is going to win that battle. The defender can also win in battle. Again, so if you happen to have a worse thing as well. And uh, again, it's going to be a blind draw. So depending on what you want to be playing out as well. Uh, so I talk about completing a square. Whoever controls that last hole to complete a, a square can obviously gain control. And that can score them points as well. And again, you can keep on attaching tiles. You could have allies, which might help you for whatever reason as well. And there might well be an empty square. So it might be the case that some squares obviously don't complete. And that might just be how you choose to do it. You can also replace tiles and you can have strength of zero. So if they reach zero, immediately remove it from play. It's not considered captured. And again, you can play two on two. So the members of a team should sit across each other, as you can imagine. But ultimately, you want to be playing fair. And that ultimately summarizes up uh, 
and a rather interesting game of Chizo Rising. Now, as mentioned, I've got this game. It's, uh, it says starter set. You do need two copies of it to be playing it. And as you may have noticed, I don't have a second set, so I can't give you a review. And unfortunately, in terms of teaching this game as well, well that's how you can kind of see. You've got to kind of go off the rule book. But I can put a link through in so you can check out that rule book as well. Let me know how else you would have summarized it. Look very forward to hearing about that. And yeah, any questions about this or any other games, you know how to contact me. And that's via the contacts or the also the uh, the comments. Thanks very much. Bye for now.